Pilots, chefs, or rocket scientists, do you know who are women? Well, we found three. And today, we're going to chat about being a woman in a male-dominated field, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Please welcome our pilot. Please welcome Peterson, our chef, Charlotte Langley, rocket scientist, Natalie Panet. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today because you've got busy lives, and I know that you had to pull yourselves away from your career to have this chat. I want to start by talking about how difficult it was to actually get into your line of work, if it was difficult at all. And, and Charlotte, I'm going to start with you. Was it tough? Well, I fell into cooking kind of by accident the first time. I actually wanted to be a famous singer. That didn't turn <gasps> out. So anyway. Can you give us uh, a couple of bars? Absolutely not. <laughs> 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 so I fell into it by going to a culinary school yeah. and, and on the east coast of Canada, and that place was sort of a neutral territory for growth. Everyone was treated the same. Everyone was invited to contribute. There was a combination of both male and female chef instructors. That seemed sort of like a neutral ground to be, in, to be introduced to. When yeah. I finally got into the scene, like started working in a restaurant for the very first time, I actually was very naive and didn't even recognize what was happening until much, many years later. What was happening? I was being treated differently because I was a woman. I didn't notice that until this one moment, and then it flipped my entire, just flipped me upside down. It was like, this is the reality of how you've been treated these past few years, and you didn't even know, you didn't even recognize it. Okay, do you mind telling us what the incident was that sort of yeah. opened your eyes to, yeah. I'm different here? I definitely can tell you. I was doing a culinary competition, so they asked me to come back to PEI, or come back to this place, yeah. and compete against all these other chefs. I was like, this is exciting, I've, I'm gonna, I've made it. Um, I was the only chef that happened to be a female competing. I was also the youngest. Um, so that was a, I noticed that, but I was like, okay, that's cool. Maybe I finally made it, I'm, value, I'm equal to all these chefs. Mm -hmm. I competed, I practiced really hard. I was super nervous, but I was like, the dish was gorgeous, everything was planned out, I practiced. Uh, the judge came to me afterwards, and they're like, so you lost? I was like, sucks yeah. uh, and he goes well you lost because you're a woman oh. I was like excuse me I'm like are you telling me this because you believe that <laughs> to be true or because you're kind of being horrible to me right now he goes the moment you walked into this place you were the only woman all the judges were men and the second you walked in you lost I'm like I can't believe you're telling me this yeah. and I walked away she's like I'm just telling you this because that's the way that it is okay. like just because it's the way that it is does not mean that's the way that it should be. So right. thank you very much. Some expletives. Uh huh. Yeah. I want to go cry in the shower for an hour. This is really interesting. So I want to get Natalie's take on this. Uh, you are in a very male-dominated field. Um, any issues like that? Was it easy to get into it? For me, my goal was to be an astronaut. That was always mm. my long-term dream, and that path to figuring out how you actually be an astronaut is pretty challenging. And so I had some pretty good champions in high school that led me into mechanical engineering and then to aerospace. I was always aware that I was a minority in those fields, but I think because I had such a lofty goal, I was always head down studying, and I'm lucky that I haven't had too many negative experiences along my path, mm -hmm. but I'm also aware that I am a white woman in my field and I am in a position of privilege and so I work really hard in my outreach to make sure that people coming in and young women especially are entering safe spaces where barriers that have no business being barriers are knocked down. Okay, Miss Maria. So as a pilot, um, you are, mo you're mostly surrounded by men. Yeah. Have you had any incidents of sexism? Has it been sort of like Natalie's situation and, and not that bad? For me, it's not been that bad, actually. Mm -hmm. The most feedback that I've been getting has been really positive. People have been like, yay, more female pilots. And it could be after flight that even passengers would stick their head into flight deck and say, like, well done, and that was good. Yes, yeah. yeah. So they're proud. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I think it's so. a rarity, and yeah. people want to celebrate that. Yeah. Getting into that profession, what was that like? I never saw it as a challenge to be female. I was just like, I want to be a pilot, so how do we make reality out of this? And yeah. I went on and did it. I googled how to be a pilot. I never thought it would be different because I'm female. Yeah. It's not before, after I started flying that I realized that I don't fly with that many female captains, actually. Right. It only happened once in four years. That you had a female captain? Yeah. Well, uh, here's what I want to know then, um, see, since it's kind of been smooth sailing um, for you, Maria, I mean, and also Natalie, outside of having to know your field, which is yeah. difficult, why do you think more women don't go into it, into your industries? Any thoughts? I think we have to look at the problem with a wider lens. So there's the first 
challenge of inspiring young women to go into the field in the first place. Mm -hmm. So maybe entering an engineering degree, and then you have to consider how many people or women graduate with that degree. Yeah. After they graduate, how many women go into that industry? Once they're in industry, how many stay for five years, 10 years? How many move up into director level, board level, or management positions? Yeah. So there's obstacles at all stages of the pipeline, and how we address those different stages are very different problems, I think. Okay, Charlotte, I have one for you. Do yeah. you feel like you've ever had to alter yourself in order to fit in better into that men's club? 100%. Yeah. I uh, was trained, all my mentors and chefs have been male, and that was just what it was. I never trained under a, fem a chef that happened to be a female, excuse me. Yeah. Um, and I learned in my environment, you know, working the line, you're hauling the bags of potatoes, you're cutting fish, whatever you may do, what you're doing, to act like the environment that was around me, which yeah. was typically male driven. Um, so when I became, I had my first chef position, I was 25 years old, I was really excited, and I was like, I'm gonna only hire young, attractive men to do all my heavy lifting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was the mentality, right? Because right. the guy that I worked for, Austin Talented Chef, there was a bunch of girls in pastry and grand manger, and they were all yeah. like this little clique, like they do these things, and they do these things. <laughs> right. And I was the only girl at that time, actually, no, that's a lie, excuse me. I was one of two women that were on the hot side of the kitchen, like actually like working stoves, right. which is a big deal. Um, so I learned in that environment to act like a guy. And I realized that the language that I'm using, not just my physical and my vocal language, that I was quite, I was sexualizing a lot of the environment. And the communication that I was using, I was becoming a part of the problem of the education for the next group and the next generation of my staff by picking up like the bro culture yeah. of like, hey guy, good job, you know, slapping of the derriere, like mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. So the, I guess what I'm trying to say is that the language between, um, the language that we're talking about, about sexuality, consent, women in industry, how do we talk about it? How do we open up this box and yeah. use the language properly? And, and I feel like the box has been opened. Oh, it's been mm -hmm. like... Psh. Yeah, there's a lot of conversation about yeah. that now. Yes. Um, I'll leave the last thought with Maria then. Uh, in order to have more female captains in your industry, is there anything you're actively doing to try and switch the reality? I try to raise the awareness that everyone can become pilots yeah. through especially social media marketing because that's so accessible for everyone. Right. And like for me, I was 24 when I realized that I could actually be a pilot. If I would have known that when I was seven, I would probably have gone for it straight away. But right. I never thought it was an option for me. Okay, it didn't look like it because you exactly. didn't see it anywhere. The stereotype right? of a pilot is a man with a big, thick mustache. So that's <laughs> who you see and you think, that's not me. Right. <laughs> but now hopefully people can see that I'm doing it and then also they can do it. Well, all three of you just by doing what you're doing are definitely changing the perception and changing your industry. So thank you so much for hanging out with us today.